So why aren't people talking about this? The root cause of autoimmune diseases. I'm not sure if you know this or not, but autoimmune diseases are surpassing heart disease in cancer. It is rapidly becoming the number one health problem on planet Earth. Check out this chart. Look at the trends of MS, type 1 diabetes, celiac, thyroid diseases. I'm talking about Hashimoto's, Crohn's. Now, there's a lot of other diseases now that are just exploding, but autoimmune diseases are basically straight up and vertical. Yet very few people are talking about something so obvious. Hopefully this video will inspire certain doctors to start to look into this solution. Your immune system has an extremely important job of differentiating self from non-self. I'm talking about your own cells from other things that are not your cells, like pathogens, like viruses, bacteria, things like that. Before I dive right into this, I want to give you just a real quick foundation. You have two parts of the immune system. You have the part that you were born with that your mother gave you, and that's called the innate immune system. And then you also have the acquired immune system. The acquired immune system is created through a series of infections, okay? So you get infected, you get a bacterial, a virus infection, and then your immune system reacts and learns from that. So the next time that you get exposed to that infection, you now have protection. The innate system doesn't have a memory. It's just there waiting to protect and it's going to instantly react to any type of pathogen. Whereas the acquired immune system could take hours or even days before it kicks in. So it's slow and adapting. But over time, that acquired immune system learns and becomes stronger, whereas the innate system doesn't. It actually gets weaker as you get older. And the last point I wanna make is that your innate immune system is not the problem involved with autoimmune diseases. It's the acquired immune system. It's what common thread runs through all autoimmune diseases as it relates to the immune system? One big thing is the regulatory T cells. They call them the T reg cells. These T reg cells have a very important job in preventing autoimmune diseases. There's another name for them as well, and that's called the suppressor T cells. They're the peacemakers of your immune system. Another function of these Treg cells is to stop the immune reaction after the immune system has done its job. But they're there to keep everything in check. There's certain drugs that they use, but prednisone is a common drug that's used with autoimmune diseases. Now, Prednisone is a synthetic version of cortisol. That's the stress hormone we have. So what I want to do is I want to just take a look at prednisone as a treatment for autoimmune diseases and what it actually is doing, and then compare that to something else that has the largest ability to regulate the immune system of anything, and that is vitamin D. So vitamin D empowers, enhances the immune system depending on what's happening. Both prednisone and vitamin D have anti-inflammatory effects. A little different mechanism, but they both reduce inflammation. But prednisone suppresses both parts of the immune system, the innate and the acquired. So if you're having a reaction on your skin, like a rash or some inflammation, it's going to go away. In fact, I used to have prednisone every year for probably 10 years in my 20s because of the darn poison ivy I was exposed to. Now, vitamin D shifts the immune system to increase the T cells. Let's just pause for a second. How important is that information? It's huge because in autoimmune diseases, we have a lowering of the T reg cells and we have this out of control inflammatory situation. But this is very, very important information. There are two other immune things that are usually too high when someone has this autoimmune disease, so Th1 and Th17. Those two immune factors are high in autoimmune and the T reg cell is low. Vitamin D suppresses both of those, those cells that create that inflammation. Now, prednisone and vitamin D have some similar things, but they have a few things that are different as well. Let's first take blood glucose. Prednisone will mobilize and break down your protein and turn that into glucose. So it raises blood glucose. It increases your risk for getting diabetes, but vitamin D does not. Vitamin D enhances the cell that makes insulin and it helps to regulate your blood sugars. Prednisone causes a breakdown of your bone. It can cause osteoporosis, whereas vitamin D helps you absorb calcium and supports bone mineralization. Now, as we age, our immune system goes down, especially because our thymus gland, which is uh, the master gland right on top of our heart, 
shrivels up and it's virtually almost non-existent as we get older. That is the gland that makes all those T cells. Vitamin D helps to slow down this process, but not if you're using the normal small recommended dosage of vitamin D that a lot of doctors recommend. You have to use higher doses or doses that are therapeutic. Now, I wanna mention just one interesting book. I don't know if you could see this right here, but this book says, What Really Causes MS by Harold Foster. There's a chapter on sunlight. And in that book, Harold Foster talks about a really interesting, strong association between someone developing MS and where they live on the planet. The closer they are to the equator, where you get a lot of sun, the less MS you're going to have. Now, that data also correlates with other autoimmune diseases, which I'm not going to get into in this video, but I'll put a link down below. I do want to also mention Jeff Bowles' book right here, which is The Cure for and Prevention of All Diseases, where he talks a lot about using high doses of vitamin D3. But what I like about this book is he emphasizes the cofactors, okay? Because vitamin D doesn't work without these cofactors like magnesium, vitamin K2. I interviewed one of the pioneers of vitamin D research, Dr. Bruce Hollis. Dr. Hollis told me that if there's any positive studies on vitamin D, it's very unlikely they're going to publish those. And I said, why is that? He said, because there's no profit in a remedy that is free the sun. You could, if you expose yourself to the sun, get all the vitamin D that you need. There's a lot of competing drugs that do not want that information out there. There are two systems of vitamin D, vitamin D affecting your bone and calcium, okay? But there's another system that doesn't involve calcium. It doesn't involve your bone. It involves supporting your immune system. You see, the bone system can get by with a small amount of vitamin D, once every two weeks, but the other system needs higher amounts in daily amounts. But for cancer, you wanna go way up from 10,000. You wanna probably do 50,000 I use every single day with the magnesium, with the K2, with the zinc. Now, at this point, I wanna make a disclaimer. I am not telling you that this is gonna cure your cancer. I am just giving you some additional information, especially since the World Health Organization even acknowledges that vitamin D has anti-carcinogenic properties. Now I wanna talk about some more research by a doctor out of Brazil called Dr. Coimbra. We call it the Coimbra Protocol. What this protocol is about is to increase the vitamin D to penetrate the resistance. They start increasing the vitamin D as you're taking this test to the point where the parathyroid hormone goes to like a low normal. That means that this vitamin D is penetrating and it's working. So that's just one of the things they do in this protocol. To me, it's so obvious what the problem is and what the solution is. And then there's another interesting tactic, which I think was created by Big Pharma, and that was that vitamin D in high amounts is toxic. Well, there's a difference between therapeutic dosages and toxicity. And for that information, you should watch this video right here.